When we look at Saturn's system, one of the most remarkable and intriguing moons is Titan. Titan is Saturn's largest moon. On January 14, 2005, the European Space Agency's Huygens probe entered the thick atmosphere of Titan. More than two hours later, it successfully landed on the surface, capturing image after image for 72 minutes. Eventually, it lost contact with its mother spacecraft, Cassini, its only link to Earth, which was orbiting Saturn at the time. During its descent and short stay on Titan's surface, Huygens managed to send back hundreds of incredible images. These showed us Titan like we had never seen it before. Even now, over 17 years later, they remain the best photos we have from the surface of Titan, the most Earth-like moon in our solar system. You are watching Kaya Night. Huygens was the first probe to land on a body in the outer solar system and the furthest from Earth. It traveled for seven years, attached to NASA's Cassini spacecraft, before being released into Titan's thick, hazy atmosphere. When Huygens entered Titan's skies, no one knew what would happen. Titan was a complete mystery. Before Huygens, only a few spacecraft had passed by Titan. Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, and Voyager 2. But those flybys were brief, and we knew very little about Titan. What Huygens would find was a big question. Titan's thick atmosphere makes it extremely hard to study from Earth. Through telescopes, it just looks like a blurry orange ball. But thanks to Huygens and Cassini, we now know that Titan is unlike any other moon. It is the only other known world with stable liquids on its surface. But instead of water, these are lakes and rivers made of liquid methane. Methane also falls as rain. The environment is so cold that water freezes into solid rock, forming mountains and valleys. So how could Huygens land safely on such a strange and distant road? In fact, the mission wasn't originally meant to land. Its main job was to study Titan's atmosphere, including the temperature, pressure, wind, and chemical makeup. But just in case the probe did reach the surface, engineers designed it to survive different landing conditions. They made Huygens light enough to float if it landed in the sea, and gave it enough battery life to send data from the surface for a short time, assuming it survived the impact. But its main goal was to gather science during the fall. Anything after landing would be a bonus. As Huygens dropped through the atmosphere, it opened its parachute and began capturing images. This video shows what it saw during its 2 hour and 27 minute descent through Titan's thick orange haze. At first, only an orange-brown blur was visible, but as the probe fell lower, the clouds began to thin. Around 50 kilometers above the ground, features on the surface started to appear. A dark valley became visible between bright, mountainous regions. Dark lines were seen beyond the hills, part of a large field of sand dunes that stretch across Titan. The images also revealed a network of channels, possibly carved by methane rain flowing down the slopes. Sadly, Huygens had a software error in its communication system. It was supposed to send back around 700 images to Cassini, but only 376 were received. Nearly half were lost forever. Still, the images it did send were groundbreaking. They allowed us to see beneath Titan's clouds in detail for the first time. In just a few hours, Titan changed from a blurry dot to a road we could actually explore. After its descent, Huygens landed gently on the surface. Luckily, it didn't fall into a lake, hit sharp rocks, or land on solid ice. Instead, it touched down on soft, wet ground, likely made of tiny grains of ice. This is the only photo ever taken from the surface of Titan. It shows a flat area with scattered pebbles. There is no visible liquid, but the place looks a lot like a dried up lake or riverbed. In the distance, you can see small rolling hills. The pebbles are made of water ice, frozen so hard that they behave like rock. At the landing site, Huygens measured a temperature of minus 180 degrees Celsius. After 72 minutes of sending data from the surface, the Cassini spacecraft moved below the horizon, breaking the connection with Earth. Not long after that, Huygens' batteries ran out 
and the probe quietly shut down. Although Huygens only lasted for a few hours, it revealed something incredible. A frozen moon far from Earth with weather, rivers and lakes. Titan was more Earth-like than anyone had imagined. Thanks to Huygens, we now know that Titan has liquid methane seas and a chemically rich atmosphere. Titan is believed to be a prebiotic world full of complex organic molecules. However, its surface is extremely cold. Titan seems to contain a global ocean beneath its ice shell, and within this ocean, conditions are potentially suitable for microbial life. The Cassini-Huygens mission was not equipped to provide evidence for biosignatures or complex organic compounds. It showed an environment on Titan that is similar, in some ways, to ones hypothesized for the primordial Earth. Scientists supposed that the atmosphere of early Earth was similar in composition to the current atmosphere on Titan with the important exception of a lack of water vapor on Titan. To learn more about that, scientists are planning to go back. NASA is working on a new mission called Dragonfly, which is set to launch in July 2028 and arrive at Titan in 2034. Dragonfly is a flying drone, much like a small helicopter, that will explore Titan by flying short distances over the surface. It will be able to study more ground than a lander or rover could. Its mission is to find out if Titan is, or ever was, habitable. It will search for complex molecules, study the atmosphere and surface, and even look for signs of life. Dragonfly will carry a set of cameras, including microscopic and panoramic ones, to take high-quality images of Titan's terrain. But until it arrives, the stunning images taken by Huygens all those years ago remain the best we have for seeing what lies below the clouds of Titan. In the far future, Titan could become much more suitable for life. About 5 billion years from now, the sun will change and become a sub-red giant. Its surface will get hotter and this heat might be enough to melt ice on Titan, allowing liquid water to exist on its surface, a key ingredient for life. At the same time, the sun will give off less ultraviolet light. This will reduce the thick haze in Titan's atmosphere, which currently blocks heat. With less haze, more heat will reach the surface. Also, methane in the atmosphere will trap more heat, warming Titan even more. Though any life would likely develop slowly due to the cold and thick chemicals on Titan, the possibility remains fascinating. Titan may one day become one of the most promising places for life beyond Earth. Besides this video you just watched, there are many others on the channel waiting to be seen. To get more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. See you next time!